Luna, if you get into Trick Room, just Torkoal can deal with it. If you're out of Trick Room, you can get massive damage with that Life Orb Giga Drain. Yep. And of course, we are going to go ahead and find out very shortly as we've got game one and the leads are on the field for both of our trainers. Florian leading with the Incineroar and the single strike Urshifu, uh, whilst uh, Michael is going to be bringing the Torkoal and the Walking Wake. This is a Pokemon that I really, really want to see succeed. And it definitely has the right sort of tributes and conditions to be able to do so right now. Yeah, and so I, I, my German isn't too good there. I won't be able to see whether that was a speed or a special attack boost yeah. uh, coming out there. Uh, does does seem to be a forfeit just coming out. Maybe they uh, weren't into the game just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so just maybe doing a test so that we can be ready yes. for the stream. Uh, but Got us get, excited, though. But, <laughs> but, but, but there's some information revealed already, right? Mm -hmm. Like... They can speak German. They know if they that got a special attack boost or a speed boost. Unfortunately, my, my German's not good enough, I'm afraid. <laughs> my, my uh, so, so we'll have to find out in the game, because if it is a special attack boost, mm -hmm. the Urshifu will outspeed. If you get a special yes. attack boost, well, actually, no, I take that back. Ooh. Walking Wake stats are so, exactly. so interesting, whereas yes. if you invest completely into special attack mm -hmm. and speed, you can still get the special attack boost, but if yep. you just drop it just a tiny bit, you can still get the speed boost. So yep. actually, I take that back completely. I was going to say, oh, well, if it's special attack boost, Urshifu might be able to wicked blow first. <laughs> we still actually don't know. We don't know. I think it's like you mentioned it just depends on the training and the interaction of that because uh, most notably i think it is always worth going for that additional damage for uh, a pokemon such as walking weight you know you're able to benefit um immensely with the uh, weather conditions either that being the sun or in its case with hydro steam being the rain because at this point you just want to go for that damage it's it's a bit of a glass cannon pokemon that it only has one job and it, or i'd say most of the times um especially powered by that uh, light, uh, that choice specs i think it's just got such great damage potential you really need to respect it i mean it's as strong as it can be if it's carrying the choice specs right and exactly if it were to be a special attack boost i'm, I'm sure that, uh, like any any german speakers are screaming us at us in the chat right now <laughs> saying which one it was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah like it, it's it's a very very strong pokemon in the sun hydro steam being so such a cool cool move to be mm -hmm. able to be a water move that still functions in the sun yeah. uh, is really nice. You obviously get the boost to your flamethrowers if you're going for that as well. And Terra Blast Steel, that keeps it safe from any Votamains that could be running around. Yeah, and it's really good because you're able to not only go ahead and capitalize off of it defensively, because like we mentioned, it is a bit of a glass cannon. You know, it's a bolt isn't quite there unless you invest uh, heavily into it. But like you mentioned, you're able to go on to the counter attack and just... Uh, all of a sudden you have that Terra Blast available. I'm not sure if it is quite enough to pick up the KO. Maybe with its special attack increase, maybe a helping, I mean helping, I will definitely um, uh, confirm it and guarantee it, but it just depends as well on what kind of uh, flood of mains you're going up against on the other side of the field. Yeah, it would do. Uh, but then you still get to resist everything, so even if you just miss the KO with something like a Terra Steel Blast, yeah. then uh, you'd be able to just be able to resist all the attacks and respond uh, with a KO uh, afterwards. We we are going to be getting into the game, hopefully this time it would seem. Uh, it's going to be Incineroar and Fluttermain coming out against the opposing Torkoal and the Walking Wake. Uh, we'll have to see if it's going to be the special attack boost or speed boost. Let's try and focus on one of the words. Yes, I, I Which think... one's it going to be? <laughs> um, uh, it is... Uh, I saw, I'm sorry. It, it, initiative. <laughs> initiative, I, like... I, I, that sounds, maybe I, speed? I would go with speed there. <laughs> initiative. So bo both the Fluttermain okay. and the Walking Wake got the same boost. They did. So, confirmed. 100%. Confirmed. But we just don't know which one. I would say... I would say 90%. I'm still unsure. But we will find out in the game. But it doesn't yeah. really matter. Whichever boost it would be, the, like because they got the same boost, the Fluttermane is going to be faster than the Walking Wake. Exactly. Special attack boost, speed boost doesn't matter. The Fluttermane is naturally faster. So you can pretty safely just go for, uh, for a fake out into either slot here. The Torkoal, you could easily get some great damage onto it with something like um, mm -hmm. your Shadow Ball to reduce the powers of any eruptions that's coming out. Yep. You might be forcing this Walking Wake into its Terra Steel very early because it's choice specs. It can't protect. It could mm -hmm. be a fake out into the Torkoal and a Moonblast into the Walking Wake and that would be a KO without any kind of terrestrialization. But there is that terrestrialization coming out turn one. There it is. So already trying to go ahead and react to the current board state. We are going to have Walking Wake going in for the Steel type. So like you mentioned, Jamie, we're able to have that resistance already applied for this Pokemon. Maybe go on the offensive as well. However, the fake out will prevent that from the Incineroar. So in this scenario, actually, uh, the Fluttermane completely ignores the Walking Wake, goes for the KO onto the Torkoal, does unfortunately miss it. And we know this Torkoal is charcoal boosted and trying to go for the eruption. Unfortunately, just took too much damage to be able
able to make any sort of difference there. Yeah, it's always sad to see an eruption that weak after taking so much damage and almost kind of a wasted terrestrialization on turn one, or at least now because the Flutterming's locked into Shadow Ball, you didn't need to have gone for your terrestrialization. This could have just been stay as your Water Dragon, you can go for Hydro Steam, that's a KO into the Incineroar. Yes, you can now re-choose which, which move you're going to lock into because you did get faked out, you didn't go, go for a move yet, you can still once again choose. Do you go for the Steel Terror Blast? That's a KO into Flutterming for sure. Do you go for a Hydro Steam into Incineroar? I would strongly suspect with the Choice Specs, that's enough to be able to pick up the KO, given that we're in the sun as well. So, at least you do still have the flexibility with your, your walking wake, but you have used your terrestrialization early for not the greatest of effects. Yeah, as we are going to see the Eisen Hand, which is the Iron Hands, of course, now coming onto the field, which is very interesting of a choice here. We know, of course, that the Flutter Main over on Florian's side is locked in due to its choice bet, but we've got the Fairy terrestrialization from this Incineral, so maybe anticipating a Draco Media going into that slot, wanting to sort of work around that but the shadow ball will be going into that iron hands which does have the assault best of course is going to be able to resist that quite nicely or take that damage should i say but guess what doesn't take the damage it is that terror blast onto the flutter main and that is a ko yeah absolutely and at least you get to respond with a flare blitz into the opposing walkway Whoa. which was now a steel type and in the sun that's easily a ko i was just about to say that fairy terror might come back to bite florian but because you'd be able to go for a super effective now steel terror blast into the incineral doesn't matter walking wake's been taken care of and now with the fairy terror you're actually pretty decent against the opposing iron hands it can't go for a super effective fighting attack with its drain punch into the opposing incineral now you're forced into going for something like the heavy slam and you won't get any recovery with that we don't know the speed interactions between the Iron Hands and the Incineroar just yet as well. Incineroar is naturally faster than the opposing Iron Hands. It could get a Sun Boosted Flare Blitz off before that Heavy Slam would be able to go off. But there it is. There's uh -huh. the Venusaur. It's been left in the back here, uh, ready to try and sweep in that end game. It does have to contend with that Ogre Pond that's joined the field for Florian as well, though. But it does have a good response to it, however, being that Sludge Bomb, which at the current moment is actually super effective against both of Florian's Pokemon because of that Fairy Terrestrialization. So this is uh, surely going to have to force Florian to actually try to go on a bit more of a reactive uh, response and play right now, as we do know because of the Chlorophyll, Venusaur will be able to outspeed everything on the field. Yeah, and Sludge Bomb, like, that's going to be really effective. You've got Fake Out active on the Iron Hands as well. You can go for a Fake Out into either slot and then follow up with the Sludge Bomb. It seems Fake Out is going into the Ogre Pond here, and then it's the Sludge Bomb into this now Fairy-type Incineroar. Whoa! But and it does pick up the KO there, just going to show why Life Orb pays so much dividends on any sort of Fairy-type Pokemon on the other side of the field. So Chlorophyll, uh, Venusaur already starting strong right now with this Day 2 here in Dortmund. You got, can't go for a terrestrialization with your Ogre Pond now to get the special defense boost and also get rid of that weakness to poison. Uh, Urshifu is the Pokemon wait in and back for Florian. Yeah, that's going to be neutral to Sludge Bomb, but its special defense is not its strong suit. It's probably going to go down to its Focus Sash thanks to that Life Orb on the Venusaur. And you also have to contend with this Iron Hands. We're in the sun. Mm -hmm. Ivy Cudgel's not doing much damage. So yep. this Iron Hands still in a great position as well. It's going to be able to resist the Wicked Blows that could come out. Mm -hmm. be, it's curious to see if the Wicked Blow will be enough on the Venusaur. It's probably going to have taken two rounds of Life Orb chip. So it's going to be at less HP than it would be otherwise. And you don't tend to invest too much in bulk mm -hmm. if you are Life Orb. Yeah, and we are going to be seeing the defensive play from the Ogre Bond there. Not wanting to force subject to a Sludge Bomb, but no, the Venus will completely ignores it. Goes for the Giga Drain into that Urshifu. Of course, it will be going ahead and breaking that Focus Sash. Not quite being able to bring it down to 1 HP, and the Retaliation will be coming out. It does focus down with a Wicked Blow into the Venusaur. Not quite enough to pick up the KO, and there it is. The double up from that Iron Hands does guarantee the KO onto the Urshifu. All of a sudden, we've got Michael having so much offensive pressure versus Florian's final Pokemon, that being the Ogre Pond. It's just a really strong showing for the Venusaur there. The Sludge Bomb has been very effective against that Fairy-type Incineroar, and the Giga Drain allowed this Venusaur to survive the Wicked Blow because it got extra recovery. It would have KO'd itself to the Life Orb recoil, uh, but now it's uh, uh, still on the field to get that final Sludge Bomb and take care of that Ogre Pond and win the first game for Michael. Yeah, and what a way to go ahead and show off 
this um, fire call, or should I say this um, sun call from uh, Michael Seiden. Uh, what fashion as well, I think, having that walking weight with the steel terrestrialization type is quite nice. Not something that you commonly see, especially when you're running a sun team, which means that, of course, the walking weight, all of a sudden, you know, it resists fire type moves by uh, four times, but uh, then you just uh, transition that once you terrestrialize and you're weak to any sort of fire type moves immediately. Yeah, the terrestrializations were interesting on both sides of the field. Uh, the Terra Steel Blast was, well, you have to terrestrialize to make it a steel type so yeah. that you can knock out that Flutter main in one shot. A Choice Specs Hydro Steam is strong, probably not enough into a very specially bulky Flutter main, though. Mm. Uh, but then on the other side, the Fairy Terra, that me meant your Incineroar was now weak to Sludge Bomb, and there's no Earth Power available on this Venusaur. It would have been mm -hmm. able to shrug off any attacks it would want to go for. Like, yeah, Sludge Bomb would do good damage to an yeah. Incineroar, but it would easily be able to survive. But as soon as you commit that Fairy Terra, probably trying to either drop the weakness to the fire so that Hydro Steam wouldn't have done as much damage, mm -hmm. or be immune to a Draco Meteor if you're trying to catch a switch in as well. Yep. Uh, but both Terras, like the Steel Terra, yep. got KO'd to Flare Blitz. You're a Water Dragon that got KO'd to exactly. Flare Blitz because you went for your Terra. <laughs> so I think maybe managing the Terras a little bit better for both players here uh, could be crucial. Yeah, and we did actually get confirmation, and you were quite right there, Jamie, not to uh, give you even more confidence in your words. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, speeds of the Walking Weight as well as the Flutter Main were the ones that were enhanced by the Protosynthesis boost there. So uh, indeed, it was uh, quite a good sort of deduction there, but uh, not really really sort of a testament to what we saw there because I was quite surprised with a couple of the damage. I was thinking, oh, surely it should have done a bit more damage if it was special offensive uh, on the protosynthesis boost. Yeah, I would assume that a, a special attack boost booster energy in, like from, well, not booster energy, protosynthesis in the sun and also choice specs. I'd have probably got a Torco uh, in one shot with a Shadow Ball. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, being able to survive is nice. Yeah. But then following up with a really weak eruption, you probably <laughs> want to be switching up your moves if you're expecting to take some damage with Torco there. Yeah, definitely being the case. But we do have game two coming up right now. Let's see if there are going to be any sort of adaptations from either side of the field. It doesn't look like that is the case, as we do have the Incineroar on Florian's side with that Urshfu single strike versus the uh, Torkoal and Walking Weight. But uh, apologies, I think the Urshfu is that adaptation. If I'm not mistaken, it was a Flutter main in game one. Yes, it is going to be uh, potentially a bit more effective here uh, in dealing with uh, the Walking Weight. You can pretty safely just go for a fake out and also a wicked blow into that slot and there's not really too much you can do but you would take a, an eruption at full HP on the way so yeah you can target whichever Pokemon you want with fake outs and you do have that focus sash keeping yourself safe so the Ashfield will make it through this turn mm -hmm. were the Incineroar just to click the fake out button but then you have to take a lot of damage in return whether that's an eruption or it's a choice specs whatever move the, the walking weight we want to go for. Yeah, and I think, at least for right now, the offensive pressure is definitely on Michael's side. But we do have the fake out disruption that's always available, so this may force Michael to actually react a bit more as well with this switching, as it does indeed be the Ferrigraph, which is going to be blocking those fake outs. Yeah, and that means no priority there. Yeah, that oh, looks like nice. it was some priority move, assumedly a fake out into the walking wake or the torque hole. That means you can freely go for a Hydra Steam Whoa. in the sun. That is a one hit KO onto an Incineroar. Such a bulky Pokemon that doesn't get knocked out in one shot very often at all. Yeah, especially not from a water type move uh, under sun conditions as close combat will be coming up from the Urshifu, dealing quite good of amount of damage there. A uh, two hit KO guarantee from the looks of it and does of course still retain its focus sash, opting to go for the close combat there just in case there may be any sort of a switch in to the Iron Hands which may have resisted a weaker, uh, wicked blow. Now Fluttermane's joining the field and that was a lot of damage into the opposing walking weight and we know that both of these uh, protosensus ones got a speed boost, so that means the Fluttermane is going to be able to outspeed, and a Terra Steel probably doesn't save the Walking Wake at this point. That was a lot of damage from the close combat, and if you just go for something like a Moonblast, you'd be able to easily pick up the KO, even if it Terra Steals. If you go for a Dazzling Gleam, that mm -hmm. might be close, yeah. because if you go for a Dazzling Gleam and a Wicked Blow, then you'd probably be able to KO the, the Ferrigiraff here pretty comfortably, uh, maybe force some terrestrialization on the Ferrigiraff, and then maybe it will be able to survive that mm. attack. It's going to be close, so it seemed like a very good turn blocking the fake out from the Incineroar with the Fridraft, 
but now that's allowed the switch in for the Flutter main, and you've taken so much damage on your walking wake. This actually seems like a pretty reasonable position for Florian. Yeah, actually does, and I think Michael may want to try to go for the Trick Room mode setup in order to just open up uh, with a mid to end game sweep uh, with the Torkoal. Uh, you're going to have to try to time the uh, switch in quite nicely, as uh, there's going to be a lot of damage coming out from this uh, Fairy boost, uh, Fairy Terra boosted Flutter main under, of course, the sun, but we know that it's got uh, the speed boost. However, Troy Specs is definitely going to be threatening a lot of damage. Yeah, and you know, forced into the terrestrialization of the fairy type for both of these Pokemon here. That fairy tail might keep that Feridra safe from that wicked blow. Yeah, as we are going to see the focus down into the spot, at least from this uh, turn here. Yeah, I think even a wicked blow at that range will surely pick up the KO. We did see a special attack drop on the Feridra, but no, we're actually going to see the Hydra team move first. Of course, confirming it is faster than the Urshifu being able to bring it down to its focus slash, but no, we do have the confirmation of the combination of attacks from Florian's side. The Trick Room is no longer an option for Michael. Feridra is out for the count, and all of a sudden, we've got um, this walking weight not being able to get as much off as it would have liked. Yeah, very nicely done there for Florian, not falling for the terrestrialization of the Feridraf, uh, being able to take that very nicely with that Choice Specs Moonblast and Wicked Blow. Yes, you did allow that walking weight to fire off yet another Choice Specs uh, Hydro Steam to bring that Urshifu down to its Focus Ash, and now it's in range of a Fake Out. It probably needs to go for the Detect to be able to avoid that, mm. uh, but and also the uh, terrestrialization on the Flutter Main means that that's susceptible to Fake Out as well, so there might not be anything really too bad here with just a fake out into the Flutter Main and then a Hydro Steam into that Urshifu. Yeah, and I think Florian did, of course, take that into consideration, opting to go for the switch in right here. Maybe allow for a redirection with the water absorbability to redirect those Hydro Steams as it does seem to be a, quite a nice little pivot move there in order to um, regain some momentum with your board position as we already see uh, the impact of this switch in right there. Hydro Steam just going ahead and recovering a bit of HP for that Ogre Pond. Yeah, that was still a very solid prediction from Michael there, ignoring the Urshifu, expecting it to go for that Protect to keep itself safe from the Fake Out, doubling up into what was that Flutter Main. It would have been really close if that was going to be a KO, because you'd have got extra Fake Out chip into a not very defensive Pokemon, and might be enough to KO, but that Ogre Pond, a fantastic switch in. Oh, as we're going to see a switch out from Michael uh, with the walking weight for the Tortoise. The sun is still set right now, no reactivations of it, as we do have the Follow Me from the Ogre Pond. This is what Florian was trying to do with the repositioning, trying to focus down to get rid of the Walking Wake being that big threat as the Wild Charge, but being able to bring that Ogre Bomb down to just below half of its HP, and Florian now has one more opportunity to try to go for a redirection um, move in order to re-enable the Urshifu, but it's mm. going to have to be super cautious and try to focus down on getting this Walking Wake out of the game. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's still a pretty reasonable position for Florian, though, because the fact that the Wicked Blow was a two-shot on the Torkoal means you can very safely just go for another follow me keep the Urshifu safe here's a wicked blow into that Torkoal mm. next turn you've got an incredibly safe sucker punch into the walking weight because it is choice specs and all four of its moves are offensive uh, so then you just have to deal with the iron hands and you've got a choice specs flutter main that has gone for its terra fairy waiting yep. in the back yep. a terrestrialization has been used on both sides you can't keep yourself safe anymore from this uh, from the iron hands uh, taking the moon blast as the horn leech actually is going to be able to try to get itself out of that KO range from the wild charge but the Torkoal unfortunately does not miss that it does go down from that wicked blow so the question here is what does the iron hands do it focuses onto the urshifu it wants to try to make sure that at least the uh, d damage output prowess of this urshifu is sort of limited and just gotten rid of in this game too however this does allow florian to bring in that flutter main and so you just click a dazzling gleam here and that's probably a double ko into both of the pokemon yes the sun has disappeared doesn't matter the speed Speed boosts were going to cancel each other out anyway. This Flutter Main is going to be faster than the opposing Walking Wake. It's taking so much damage, terrestrialization is not available. It's just going to be a dazzling gleam here. If the Iron Hands is bulky enough, and it's, it's pretty yeah, it bulky, <laughs> if it's bulky enough, then it's just a follow up Ivy Cudgel now yep. that the sun has gone to be able to take that KO. So here comes the massive damage from the Flutter Main. Yeah, as so we are going to see Florian try to go ahead and wrap things up immediately by going for the KO onto the Iron Hands with that Moon Blast rather than going for the Dazzling Gleam, as Flamethrower actually being the move of choice from this uh, walking way. Trying to target down the Flutter Main, but like we mentioned,
mentioned, this is just sort of um, the end sort of um, uh, writings of this game too. We already know that Florian had it in the bad because of the positioning, but very well done from Florian to actually go ahead and adapt quite nicely there. Yeah, it seemed like it was a very solid turn one coming out for Michael, but then lost loads of positioning because that flutter main was able to join the field. Yeah. Stopping the Incineral fake out was nice, but maybe not KOing the Incineral would have been much more preferable there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Urshifu was a big issue. Wicked blows were fired off uh, loads of times in that game. Maybe if it was blocked the fake out, Incineral stays on the field. Mm -hmm. You can deal with that in the next turn yeah. because you've stopped the fake out. I didn't do anything this turn. Here's the Hydra Steam on the next turn mm -hmm. after I've broken the Focus Sash on the opposing Urshifu. And then the Fridgeraf is free as well because you forced the Hydra Steam into the Incineral slot. Mm -hmm. Fridgeraf is now free. Yeah, and we did see, though, that Michael did actually use up the Terrestrialization in hopes of trying to get a Trick Room set up as he, he, they did correctly identify that that may have been able to allow more of a sort of sweep um, form action to be uh, coming out from the Torto, which felt like it was just stuck in the mud a bit. You know, it was always subject to all of these faster Pokemon over on Florian's side and wasn't able to go ahead and dispatch any sort of raw damage output that we know it's so commonly known for. Doesn't, it doesn't seem like the Walking Wake really needs the, the Protosynthesis boost, or mm. at least the Hydro Steam boost, I guess, because the speed boost isn't really coming into play. Given the fact that it is a speed boost, it's going to naturally outspeed the Urshifu anyway, and then the Fluttermane will still outspeed you in and out of the sun regardless. Right. So it doesn't seem like it actually needs the sun. If you get into Trick Room, like if you bring the Fridgeraf and the, get, bring the Torkoal, and you manage to get into Trick Room, the Torkoal can do some good things. Mm. But we haven't been able to get into Trick Room in either game yet. So this Torkoal, it's almost been like it's dead weight. So what sort of adaptations then do we feel that Michael may need to go uh, and actually apply in this game three? Because uh, maybe, like you mentioned, not even bring the total or at least save it in the back and bring fake out perhaps? Well, I think the Venusaur was really good in that first game, right? And he didn't bring it to game two. So I wouldn't be surprised if he switches it up back to that Venusaur, brings it in that game three, because it was doing some really nice things. The Sludge Bombs mm -hmm. were getting a load of really nice KOs. It was threatening that Ogre Pond, yeah. and it was threatening the now Fairy Terror Incineroar. So mm -hmm. Venusaur might be a good adaptation, an adaptation to go back for in game three. But we're actually going to have the switch up from both of the trainers here in this crucial game three. We've got Florian bringing their own Feridoraf alongside that Urshifu single strike versus Michael's Iron Hands and Feridoraf as well. So Fake Out is on the field, but it seems like Florian anticipated Fake Out next to Trick Room setup, brought their own Trick Room and said, right, let's go into 50-50 mind games here. Very nicely done here. This Urshifu is in a pretty solid position as well to try and get an attack into that Feridoraf, probably forcing the fair Terrestrialization really early again. A Wicked Blue is easily a KO into that opposing for a draft, and your own for a draft is stopping that fake out, meaning that Urshifu is free to do what it wants this turn. Mm. However, if you do go for the Fairy Terrestrialization, your for a draft is easily surviving this turn, and you could just double up into this Urshifu with a KO with something like a Drain Punch or a, and a Hyper Voice, but you're not going to be able to get that KO if it's switching out here. No, you're definitely not. So this may actually be a bit of a bait for Michael to go ahead and burn up that Terrestrialization option for themselves with that for a draft into the Fairy type as the Incineral is actually brought in here. Uh, of course, it won't be able to get any sort of priority moves such as Fake Out off, but it does have that uh, Intimidate uh, being um, inflicted onto the Iron Hands, has options, of course, going for the Parting Shot in order to sort of uh, mitigate even more damage from Michael's side. Yeah, the Fridraf on Michael's side is moving first here. There is that Hyper Voice, of course. Now we're seeing a rise in the throat spray after using that Hyper Voice. It is a sound-based move. Now it's going to be pretty strong here. Oh. And the uh, Fridraf on Florian's side is moving first before that Iron Hands. Oh, moving first. Going for the sidekick there, actually. As we see the Drain Punch going into the Incinera slot, of course it was still going to be targeting a Dark-type move, regardless whether it was the Urshifu and Incinera. was able to recover a bit of HP there, but a bit of a stalemate from both the trainers. It feels like nobody really wants to commit to that trick room just yet. Yeah, but we have committed terror already on the for a draft, and it's, that seemed unnecessary on this turn, given that the Urshifu did switch out. Now the speed interactions between the Incineroar and the for a drafts are going to be uh, quite crucial here as well, because now you've got your throat spray activated on mm -hmm. Michael's side. You're probably going to be able to pick up a KO just about with another Hyper Voice, yeah. and then that would allow your Iron Hands to freely go for another attack into the opposing for a draft. You saw how much the Psychic did, and the fact that the Drain Punch recovery put the Iron Hands very healthy once again. And you haven't really done too much damage this turn. Yeah, I don't see why Michael won't try to opt for that choice here. However, we're going to find out as the Hyper Voice does come out and pick up the KO 
thanks to that throat spray activation in the prior turn. Dealing some respectable damage onto the Fugraf, forcing that Citrus Berry recovery right there, uh, maybe putting it outside of range of being susceptible to a KO from the Drain Punch there. However, Psychic focuses down once again on the Iron Hands because of that Salt Vest. It just takes that damage so well. No special defense drop and the retaliation of the Wild Charge bringing that range, that recovery of the Citrus Berry, straight back down. Yeah, I do like the Wild Charge there over the Drain Punch, because Wild Charge is slightly stronger, and that might now be range of that Hyper Voice uh, if a Fridge wants to go for it. And it would probably, based on the previous damage, be just out of range if it was Drain Punch instead. So maybe sacrificing a little bit of HP on the Iron Hands mm -hmm. so the Fridge is in range of your own Fridge attack. Fluttermane's now joined the field, though. Iron Hands is not in a good position anymore. Mm -hmm. It was doing pretty well against the Dark Types, yeah. but now the Fluttermane's here and it's taken half damage. That's easily going to be a KO. No need to Serastalize on the Fluttermane uh, for even a Dazzling Gleam to pick up the KO uh, on the on the Iron Hands here. So, But for Richard, is still in a pretty reasonable position. It's got his boost and it can do some good damage. Yeah, exactly. And it sort of like makes Michael really think hard on, okay, well, can I try to get away with any sort of uh, trick from here from my side? Because we do know that Heavy Slam is an option on the Iron Hands. It can try to focus down on the Fluttermane, but because of that Intimidate drop, it may just miss the KO, dependent on the bolt training that this Fluttermane has. It is committing its terrestrialization here to try and do as much damage as it can possibly do, but that also drops its Ghost Typing. If the Frigiraph went for Hyper Voice, that's mm. still going to be doing some pretty good damage to that Fluttermane. As we're going to see the Helping Hand coming out from Florian's side, wanting to guarantee a couple of KOs here, as it's going to be committing with the moon blast it wants to get rid of the trick room and it does so in quite exceptional fashion one hit ko yeah but that means that the iron hands has not been ko'd here that means it's got the option to go for a heavy stand but it has been intimidated by the incineral previously that might allow the flutterman survivor and it does a very well fl trained flutterman coming wow. out here for florian yeah very well trained indeed but it's sort of that um ulterior mode that michael has available bringing the venusaur does mean that the turtle in the back will enable it to outspeed. So all of a sudden, we're once again in a bit of a sort of situation of mind games. Do you go for Trick Room or do you not? And it sort of depends on Michael's targeting, which one is the priority focus for himself to be able to dispatch of. But also now you've locked into Moonblast with the, the with the Fluttermane and Venusaur is going to be able to resist that with this Poison Typing. That's in a pretty reasonable position. Assumingly, the Torko switch in here allows the Venusaur to outspeed both Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to, because the Fluttermane to get a speed boost, it could be trained as fast as possible, allowing it to outspeed the opposing Venusaur. Yeah. But then you can just ignore it on this turn. You can get that Sludge Bomb or even a Weather Ball now. Weather Ball is going to be even stronger than Sludge Bomb because it's going to be able to get that Sun Boost. So, uh, yeah, it's good. that should be enough to pick up the KO on that for a giraffe quite easily. Yeah, as we do have the little Fire Turtle joining us right now with that drought further enabling the Chlorophyll. The question is, what does Florian go for? Goes for the Moon Blast focus into the Torkoal of what was the Iron Has dealing a two-hit KO. Wow, you just no, this pipe was so powerful, but the weather ball, like you mentioned, Jamie, does ensure the KO onto the Farigraph, and all of a sudden, we've got this dual mode of Trick Room and the good old chlorophyll Tortol combination really putting in the work here. But Fluttermane did at speed the Venusaur even in the sun, so what a well-trained Fluttermane this is to be able to survive that heavy slam and also be able to still outspeed a chlorophyll-boosted Venusaur in the sun, and you've got some really good damage into the Tortol. That's still a two-hit KO with mm -hmm. a resisted attack, which is really impressive. But the fact that this Venusaur doesn't have any status moves like Sleep Powder that it normally has, yep. uh, just going pure offense here means it's susceptible to a Sucker Punch. And the fact that the Fluttermane outspeeds of Moonblast on a, a Sucker Punch would be able to KO this Venusaur. So uh, whether you target down that and ignore mm -hmm. the Torkoal on this turn, because mm -hmm. Eruption won't do as much. It's a half HP. But do you just focus on the, the KO for the Venusaur? Yeah, because you can still at least guarantee the KO onto the Fluttermane, so it really will depend on the targeting from both of these trainers here. Does Michael fall um, uh, close to the bait of the Sucker Punch or not. However, no, we don't see any sort of priority moves coming out right now. Moonblast will be going and targeting the Venusaur. Not quite enough to pick up the KO. No, it does actually come very close with that critical hit, but the Giga Drain will
will pick up, of course, the Flutter main. Restore a tiny bit of HP there for hit points. But the more important thing is right now, the Urshifu did not try to attempt the Sucker Punch. It could have led to this Flutter main potentially surviving the turn based on what Torgol did. And still going to be able to get some pretty good damage here with this Wicked Blow, but it didn't target the Venusaur. That is a KO on the Torkoal at least. Uh, but this Venusaur is still around and it's mm. still going to be in the sun outspeeding the opposing Urshifu. And there's also that Iron Hands that at half HP, it's it's doing okay. Yeah. And we'll be able to force the Fake Out into the Urshifu this turn. That's almost certainly going to be just a Protect to stall out both mm -hmm. the Sun turns and the Fake Out turn. Yeah. There's no reason not to go for a Protect here if you're on the Urshifu. But then the next turn, do you just go for that Sucker Punch to KO the Venusaur yeah. and then hope that your close combat is enough to be able to KO the Iron Hands? But then at the same time, does the Venusaur go for a Protect expecting that Sucker yeah. Punch? Yes. And it, it, there's a lot of mind games like you said there. So of course, we are going to go ahead and see that defensive play right there. Florian wanting to guarantee the nullification of the fake out pressure and like you mentioned i think we are reaching the stage of the game where the urshifu may have to try to hope for a close combat maybe crit ko into the iron hands and then follow up follow up with such a punch mind games immediately after since it will likely survive unless there's a sludge bomb poison which will be quite unfortunate for florian to try to come back from yeah you have to go for the iron hands this turn yeah. if you sucker punch the venusaur drain punch will definitely put it out of range of close combat it has to be close combat and then here's the sucker punch mind games that's what it has to be but michael does have a way of getting around that if he does go for a sludge bomb here to try and get a poison mm. but no going for the giga drain instead some good damage and might just Ooh. Ooh, that might be out of range of Sucker Punch, but it's going to take Life Will Recall once again. Yeah, and it does go right within range, but the real question is does it survive? Oh, oh, it doesn't! It survives on two hit points! This Iron Hands is going ahead and it's going to be giving Michael his win. And all of a sudden, this uh, lovely Iron Hands has been able to catapult Michael straight up to 10 wins and two losses in what fashion, Jamie? Yeah, no Sucker Punch mind games for us here. Uh, it was like <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely clutch survival for the Iron Hands, and that is Michael winning round 12. <laughs>